Are you starting a watch collection? I'll tell you the five items you should have as you start this journey on this episode of Adventures with Time. There are loads of tools, accessories, and accoutrement you can acquire as a watch enthusiast. And you probably will have these at some time in your journey. However, I want to tell you the five items every serious collector should have when starting out. Note I use the words serious and starting. By that, I intend this list to be for those who are starting out just before or as you acquire your first watch. Not after you have three or five watches. Additionally, this is for watch enthusiasts, those who are really interested in the design, engineering, and enjoyment in watches. If you are looking for any of these items, you can find them in my Amazon affiliate store. I'll leave a link in the description. Let's begin. First up is strap options. Especially when you have a small collection, having additional straps and bracelets allow you to artificially expand your collection without buying additional watches. You can switch up the appearance of your watch by changing from a strap to a bracelet or from a two-piece leather strap to a NATO. There are many options available at all price ranges. As a new collector, you will need to be aware that straps come in specific lug widths to match your watch. They also are often offered in different lengths. I, with my 7 and 7 8 inch wrist, need to ensure that the straps I consider will be long enough to fit my larger wrist. Other than that, go crazy, just not too crazy. I have a dozen or so straps, somewhat because I have watches with different lug widths. A few were impulse purchases, which never got wrist time. But that's part of the fun of trying different straps. Even if you have just one watch with the original strap or bracelet, you'll probably want to have some tools. You may need to add or remove links from your bracelet. If the bracelet wasn't sized for you when you purchased the watch, you may want to do this yourself. You could take it to a watch shop and have them do it. However, as a budding watch enthusiast, this is something you should learn how to do. Similarly, you should know how to remove and attach a strap or bracelet to a watch head and to do this without mutilating the watch. I have a set of screwdrivers, actually multiple sets, that include several sized heads. Note that not all bracelets use flathead screws, and many don't use screws, rather push pins, which require a different tool. Hence, understand your needs. Now, for removing spring bars, you'll need another tool. I use a simple but quality spring bar tool. These have a tiny fork tip to catch and push one end of the spring bar to release it from the lug. Some people like to go with spring bar pliers, which enables one to push both ends of the spring bar at the same time, making it much easier work and less prone to scratching the lugs. There are lots of other tools one could have, but these are what I would consider the essential tools for a beginning enthusiast. Oh, if you don't have something already, you should get a pad or other cushion surface to place your watch on while you work on it. I simply use a desk pad I already had on my work surface. Watches get dirty, that's a fact. Even fingerprints can distract from the appearance of a watch. You'll want to clean your watch every now and then, but you'll need to be careful not to add micro scratches, especially to polished surfaces. My recommendation is that you get some microfiber cloths. These can be used to clean watch crystals, cases, and bracelets. You still need to be careful to remove any grit that can scratch a watch when using a cloth. You can rinse the watch if it's water resistant or use a dust blower. After that, a microfiber cloth will clean your watch nicely. As a new watch enthusiast, you're probably not ready or need something intended to remove scratches like a Cape Cod cloth or poly watch. That will come soon enough, but a nice soft cloth should be part of your watch arsenal. Remember in my intro when I included the words serious, referring to you being a watch enthusiast or collector? Someone who is serious about this hobby will want to closely examine their watches, inspect the details of the dial, and even the movement through a display case back. You will need a magnifier. I suggest a simple handheld magnifier. Some will use a loop. I use this 5 power magnifier, which I've been using to look at coins for years. You may also want something you can wear on your head to free up both hands when working on a watch. Whether you use something you already have or get something specifically for this new hobby, I suggest you have a magnifier before you buy your first watch.
although not needed for your first watch, eventually, perhaps very quickly, you will have multiple watches. Storage solutions will be something to consider. Home storage for your collection, a travel solution when you want to take watches on a trip, and maybe a secure storage if you have highly valued watches. A nice watch box is usually the first storage a collector will buy. Often we end up with multiple boxes as we grow our collection. I started out with a 6 slot box, switching to a 12 slot box with an accessory drawer. We currently have a 24 slot box and a box for my straps. I found this storage box for my spare straps and bracelets to be very convenient. And I have this nice leather watch roll for when I travel. There are many options from which to choose. Search around and get the storage solution that best suits your needs. And now for a bonus element, which I think every budding watch collector needs. Patience. You will be tempted to acquire many watches at first. You'll think you want to enjoy all different types of watches. That's what I did. I thought I wanted watches with different complications from different countries and on and on. I ended up purchasing 15 watches in the first 15 months of collecting. Ultimately sold off several watches that I found really didn't suit my taste or interests. I was able to afford this experimentation. However, there are less expensive ways of testing the waters, which I discussed in a video. I'll leave a link up here. Undoubtedly, as you grow your collection and become a more experienced and adventurous watch enthusiast, you will want to undertake more intricate activities. Don't rush into these. However, when the time comes, you may find yourself needing the following. A digital caliper, fair spring bars, advanced tool sets, dust blower, movement holder, radicchio putty for dust removal, time grapher for measuring the accuracy of a watch, and the list goes on. But these can all wait. What can't wait is for you to watch these videos that will help you understand possible paths your, your watch activities may take. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.